this, the 11th session of the New York City Council. I'm Council Member Adrian Adams, the chair of this subcommittee. We're joined today by the former chair of this subcommittee, Council Member Peter Koo, and Council Member Inez Barron. Today we will hold a hearing on a single item, LU7, the designation by Landmarks Preservation Commission of the Peter P. and Rosa M. Huberty House, located at 1019 Bushwick Avenue as a historic landmark. The Peter P. and Rosa M. Huberty House is a freestanding colonial revival home made of brick, terracotta, and galvanized iron. The house was designed in 1900 by Ulrich Huberty, who also designed several other Brooklyn landmarks. The house is located in the 34th Council District, and at a June 25, 2013 hearing held by LPC, representatives of former council member Diana Reyna spoke in support of this designation. The current council member, Antonio Reynoso, has also expressed his support for this designation. Our speakers today are Ali Rasul Najad and Kate Lemus Mikhail. Please raise your right hands. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this committee and in response to all council member questions? Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair Adams, and good morning, subcommittee members. Uh, my name is Kate Lemus McHale, Director of Research at the New York City Landmarks Preservation Commission. I'm joined by Ali Rasulinajad and Erica Rothman. Thank you for the opportunity to present the designation of the Peter P. and Rosa M. Huberty House. The Commission voted to designate this property on October 24, 2017. The building had originally been calendared and heard in 2013. The Commission has received both written and verbal public testimony including support for designation from former council member Diana Reyna, current council member Antonio Reynoso, the Historic Districts Council, and the New York Landmarks Conservancy. The property owner, a family member, and a community member supporting them opposed designation at the public hearing. Uh, LPC has reached out to the owner a number of times, and late last year, representatives of LPC and council member Reynoso met with the owner and explained how the commission staff can be a resource to owners, including uh, providing technical guidance and recommending appropriate methods and materials for maintenance and restoration work. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the Huberty House was designed in 1900 by the notable Brooklyn architect Ulrich Huberty for his parents and is a significant and intact example of the colonial revival style of the early 20th century. It contributed to the late 19th and early 20th century development of Bushwick Avenue as one of Brooklyn's prestigious residential districts and remains one of the most distinguished examples of this historical development. The landmark site on Bushwick Avenue is shown here and includes the entire uh, tax lot. The commission has designated residential and institutional buildings in this area of Bushwick including the Catherine Lipsius, Dr. Frederick A. Cook House at 670 Bushwick Avenue, the decal branch of the Brooklyn Public Library, and the Reformed Church of South Bushwick. Like these buildings, the Huberty House speaks to the rich history of development in Bushwick. The Huberty House is notable for its association with Peter P. Huberty, a German-born lawyer who became a prominent figure in Brooklyn politics and the local community, and his son Ulrich, an important Brooklyn architect who designed the house for his parents. Ulrich J. Huberty designed many fine residential, ecclesiastic, civil, civic, and commercial buildings, including the Prospect Park Boathouse and the Williamsburg Trust Company building, both designated individual landmarks. Working in the colonial revival style, Huberty adapted Georgian and federal precedents for his parents' house, including the symmetrical arrangement of the facade the hipped roof dormers, red brick facades laid in Flemish bond with grayed brick coins, and windows topped with splayed terracotta lintels. The striking main facade features a semicircular portico, an open veranda, an arch entrance, and bay windows. Among other notable features are the substantial cornice, the variety of dormers, and its ornate ironwork. 
The house's architectural details and craftsmanship stand out as particularly fine. Between 1909 and 1928, subsequent owners added four additions, each carefully designed to harmonize with the original design, including an entrance vestibule on the northwest corner, which you can see on the left, and extensions at the rear of the house. The Peter P. and Rosa M. Huberty House is a particularly fine, e intact example of the colonial revival style, a significant early work by a prominent Brooklyn architect and represents Brooklyn's immigrant history and the early 20th century character of Bushwick Avenue when it was lined with large freestanding homes. We request that the City Council uphold the designation. Thank you. Thank you. Before we continue, I'd like to acknowledge we've been joined by Council Member Dunnick Miller and Council Member Mark Traeger. You, are you going to speak also, Ali? No, okay, thank you. Does anyone have any questions? Yes, Council Member Barron. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and congratulations on your first hearing here. Uh, the opposition that was presented, what was the foundation and what issues were cited by those who were opposed to this landmarking? Uh, the property owners have actually, it's been in the same family since the 1930s, and they feel they've taken very good care of this house and they um, didn't want an extra level of sort of um, regulation placed on them. So the property as it exists has maintained all of these features that you've highlighted here, and there has not been any significant change to the facade, is that correct? That's correct, it's very intact. It's a very fine example of its style. Thank you. Members, any more? Any further questions? Are there any members of the public who wish to testify today? We're going to dismiss the panel. Okay, we will dismiss this panel. And we will call on uh, Dr. Giovinco and Ms. Virginia Chivinko. Okay, good morning. Will you please identify yourselves? Oh, this is better. My name is Virginia Giovinco, and I am the owner and taxpayer of the house in question here, and I strongly oppose this designation. This house has been the home of the family, same family since 1937, and I have lived in it since the first grade. So you can imagine through the decades, all the repairs and paint jobs that have been done, always in keeping with the colonial style and maintaining it in good condition, as you can see, and expressed by your previous speakers. Um, the old timers did not need a, an outside agency to tell them that they should preserve the appearance of this house, and I don't need an outside agency either. Now, I grew up in a house which always stressed private ownership. I was brought up believing that owning a house meant that nobody could tell you what to do, you do what you wanted, and nobody could ask you to move because somebody was getting married and needed the property. And that was a great sense of security. And as a tax owner, I felt very comfortable now knowing that it was my home. And now suddenly I get a notice in the mail, not asking me, but telling me that the house was going to be designated and it meant curtailing my control over the house. I would now need permission to make repairs. I found that quite shocking. I spoke to my contractor, the one who's done all this work for me, and he said, forget about him. He's not signing any papers. And, and uh, he, I'm afraid that contractors also, other contractors, will have the same idea. As a matter of fact, years ago, I know you have a list. I have such a list here of people. 
15 years ago, I consulted somebody on one of your lists, and it was a, a total disaster. So I really lost faith in these lists. I, I don't want to live with this feeling that who do I call if something happens? Do I have to go through all the yellow pages? Who will come and, and sign papers? It's a terrible burden on me. I, I could just I could not live with that idea. So I, I strongly oppose this designation for that moment that I don't have control over my house. Thank you. Would you wish to speak also? Sure. Thank you. My, my, my say here is, is more to ask. Can you please identify yourself? I'm Dr. Paul Giovenko, Virginia's cousin. Uh, again, this house is, was purchased by our grandfather. Um, my parents lived there. Her parents lived there. Her father lived there. My father lived there. Um, since I was born, I made tra tra trips to the house, visited the house. I lived there during the times when my mother gave birth to my brother and sister. Um, so it's deep in my, in my soul also. Um, the neighborhood, we've seen a change. We've seen it gone through many changes. Um, we're very proud of the house. We've maintained the house as much as we can. But being many, many years of age, there are many things that are falling apart. And yes, you know, you're, you're giving us a designation, but you're not saying, well, we're going to compensate you for that. Or we're going to help, oh, you know, the way the, the way the, as you can see, the fence, the, the Roth Iron fence there, it, it needs in repair. There's not, there's very hard people to find. Um, it's very costly when they see this stuff. Um, I'm not seeing that the preservation size, well, you know, we're going to give you 50% of the price to maintain this preserve or this house as a landmark. The roof, all tiled, you know, we're not going to go ahead and throw down some tar paper and some shingles, and we're going to maintain it the same way. But I don't see no compensation or help. So what is the landmark giving us, giving my cousin? She's the owner of the house. Um, when I was little, I remember going out on that portico, and watching parades down Bushwick Avenue. It was a beautiful place, it was a beautiful place. Is the Preservation Company, is the Preservation Commission, um, Historic Commission, gonna redo the neighborhood so that we can be proud of it again? How many, can, can anybody lift their hands up and say that they've walked down Bushwick Avenue or wrote, driven down Bushwick Avenue from Eastern Parkway to Myrtle Avenue? Anybody here? Okay. Where, what are you seeing? We're seeing derelict cars on front of grass, where there used to be grass, where there used to be beautiful statues in front of the homes. We see derelict cars, we see broken down cars, we see commercial vehicles. That's not, that's not showing us preservation of the neighborhood. You, know, you want to talk about one house, but what about the neighborhood, okay? And, and in conclusion, you know, we, we have one famous word that is this month come up to everything, okay? And, and the rest of the neighborhood, yeah, we're looking beautiful, but the rest of the neighborhood is looking like that S-hole. And I like to see that change. That's all. Thank you both for being here today. Thank you for your passionate testimony to this committee and to this audience. I thank you very much for yep. being here. Yes, sir? Let's go right ahead. Council Member Miller. Uh, please, if you don't mind. Yeah. I, I do have a question. I do actually have... I have driven down there. I lived uh, a few blocks away during a, a, a period in my life. And, and um, on the contrary, if, if you drive Bushwick Avenue in the community, you know that it is on the come up and that things are different, uh, certainly from what they were uh, decades in the past and that they are changing, uh, continue to change. But I, I think what at stake here is whether or not and, and your cousin said that, how do you maintain the integrity of the home? Obviously, your family has been committed for generations to doing just that. Um, it is absolutely beautiful. I, I know the house. Um, go past there two or three times a week. Um, but there are other historical or potentially historical homes that are now co-ops and condos. and. Um, I think when you have something uh, such a, a, a magnificent edifice that you have there that you want to be able to maintain that and, and the historical background of that community, 
and, and that's what we're trying to do here in the midst of whatever happens and things are happening in Bushwick for sure. I don't think anyone would, would deny that. Um, just pick up any real estate magazine. Um, but there is certainly a, a point that, that you have there, but I, I don't think um, uh, uh, representing a historical community in which uh, 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 a, a great portion of the homes have been designated, um, that I would say that it does not um, create an unfair burden in terms of maintaining the property and that experience. So it's, it, it may be a little premature uh, in, in saying so, but definitely, uh, um, we want to be supportive in, in, in whatever way and being able to maintain this property as is. And, and surely I would hope that it is not, uh, uh, that it is protected from becoming one of the condos that we see in the Bushwick area. So thank you. And um, uh, I had to be here. So forgive the attire and everything else, but um, we are here and uh, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great evening. Thank you very Thank much, Councilmember Miller. Committee members, are there any other questions? Are there any? Uh, yes, Councilmember Trager. Thank you, uh, Chair Adams, and congratulations for, for, for an excellent first first hearing. And uh, the, <coughs> the, the former history teacher in me uh, enjoys hearing about these historic uh, homes. I, I'm just. I have a question for the for the homeowner with regards to. Uh, when did you first learn about the interests uh, of the city to uh, designate this as a landmark? Say about uh, 20 years ago, 15, at least 15 to 20 years ago. So this has been in the works for close to two decades, is that correct? Yes, but I, I resented it at that time too. And uh, were there meetings organized with uh, officials from the city administration, landmarks, and you with maybe your attorney present or folks no, to go over? No, no it was just a bit very, very informal. Right, it but. 20 years ago, I, I used to go to, I was very civic minded at the time, and I, Diana Rayner is the one who suggested that perhaps I should look into landmarks. Right. And and that that's and it was a very informal that that was it. And then I got some mailing from them. Because I, I think that uh, we're, we're we're trying to be mindful of both the the interest to to preserve a sense of our city's history and at the same time being respectful and mindful of your rights um, and power as as a homeowner. And I think that th this is the balance. And I think that. Uh, the one thing that I think should be crystal clear is what are your uh, rights and responsibilities under such a designation? And how can the government make it uh, as transparent and as easy uh, for you as possible uh, throughout this process? I mean, I think that's what I think, because I think that the issue that you've raised is, a, is an interesting, a valid one, that uh, when you have a landmark property, are there contractors that are less uh, uh, willing or more reluctant to yes. work on such a property? And maybe that's where landmarks can assist or folks can assist in finding people who are specialized and trained in this work. That's a very valid issue. Um, and, and I just think that uh, folks in this committee want to be respectful uh, to your rights as a homeowner, as someone who, not just to this home, but I think your family has given a lot to the neighborhood, as you mentioned, not just to this property, but to the neighborhood as a whole. And we as a city want to want to preserve uh, these these special places that really helped shape uh, these great neighborhoods. So I, I just I, I would just appreciate if there's additional follow up from the city's end to make sure that uh, your rights are as crystal clear to you as possible, and that if there are folks who are trained and skilled in this particular field of maintenance uh, at reasonable cost, that they come to your attention. And I think that that's, this process should be a two-way street. Uh, and again, I, I thank the chair uh, for her time. May I, can I respond to that? May I respond to that? Yes, of course. I, yes, 
the landmarks does have lists of repairmen, but if you know some of them are located in Mount Vernon, I mean, all far away places, they're not going to come into Bushwick. And it's, it's a terrible sense of insecurity. You have no idea, I've been through this very recently. Who do I call and who will come? And, uh, and they see me alone and I don't know, you know, they'll charge for anything they want. It's very insecure this, if somebody's going to dictate who I call. I have somebody very nice now who I can rely on. He's not going to want to sign papers. He has no time for that. Thank you. We will be happy to uh, facilitate a meeting uh, with Landmarks to help you with that um, after this session. We will be more than happy to. And one other point I'd like. I don't yes. feel I have control over my house. No matter how small the infringement is on my privacy or my control, I feel it's, it's not mine anymore. It's, it's a terrible feeling. Councilmember Krug. Thank you, Chair Evans. Evans yeah. uh, Virginia, Joanne, go away. You're the, you're the only owner of the house, or you have a, the whole family is the owner? No, I only own the house. Huh. I'm the sole owner. Yeah, so how many people live in the house now? Just me at the moment. Uh -huh. So the family, uh, has, the family has dwindled down to uh, just me. Uh, and, and well, he, he mm. spends a great deal of time, and his children live in my house all the time. So uh, right now, can you meet all the burdens uh, on maintaining a house economically? I mean, uh, do you make enough money to pay all the bills? Yeah. I, I lived in it my whole life, so it's, uh, it's nothing new to me. Yeah, because like, like you said before, I sympathize with your situation, right? Where well, you're the only owner of the house and you're a senior citizen, so you may not like, be able to afford extra burden to maintain the house. Uh, because once it's landmark, you know, there are all these different criteria you have to meet. So, uh, so, if, so if you suffer economically, we don't want to do it. So then maybe the, uh, our committee has to uh, hold on to this. Uh, to, we have to further study on this case. Yeah. Mr. Ch uh, Chair Adams. Just, thank you. Just, just to answer yeah. that, we had a meeting with, with um, the gentleman who just spoke before with the landmarks about a month, month and a half ago. And they said, you know, they have this list, people who want, but for them to start any project, they're going to have to sign on and, and, and show the insurances and, and go through a whole bunch of paperwork before they will allow it to go. Half of these people don't want to do that. And that's the problem that we have. I live, I live out in Long Island in, in, a, in a very Italian area of Glen Cove. I can get guys in to do the brickwork and the cement work and everything, but they're not going to want to do the paperwork. And they are master mechanics, okay, at their work. It would look better than when it was built. But again, these are the problems that we sit with, okay? And she had some cement work done, and the job is off color. I'm not happy about it. It's a shameful that it happened that way. But again, you're dealing with who, what, when, and where. So if you see, the columns, all those flutings that are at the top, you can't, you, you can't find those. They're not, you can't go to Home Depot and, and buy those. You don't go to Home Depot decor. You, you don't go anywhere. They have to be handmade. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a major project. Not that we're going to change it. We want to keep it that way. We're happy. We are proud of this piece of property. And we're glad to see that other people want to make something even more proud. But again, the neighborhood, and, and let us, you know, let us have the freedom to do it the way we're doing it and the way we're keeping going with it. And, and as you see, we haven't changed. Don't plan on changing for the next I bunch of years. <laughs> I, I'd like to add something to that. You're talking about the columns. The capitals on one of them was completely destroyed about two years ago. And uh, this man that I was telling you about, the contractor, he, he searched the computer and he found a place in Oregon to, to replace those capitals. I didn't buy one. I bought enough of all four or whatever. So in case the others go, I still have so held in reserve because I know I'll never get them again anywhere. So I mean, it takes a lot of thought to own and keep maintain the house. And I love it. I mean, I have no problem doing it. But let me be free. Let me be free. This is my home. I'm not doing it for somebody else. Thank you very much for your testimony today. I will now. Thank you. Uh, I will now close the public hearing on LU7, and we will lay this matter over. I'd like to thank the members of the public.
my colleagues, council, and land use staff for attending today's hearing. This meeting is hereby adjourned. <laughs>